and girls, the Junk Man back with another detailing video series, and I'm going to go to a part two of a video I was just doing. Right now, a brother in his garage productions is out in Boise, Idaho, in the garage of the rag company.com. So, what we are going to do is I've had people ask me about microfiber uh, polishing pads. The buffing pads, polishing pads. And um, I've been meaning to make a video, but I've not had time to make any videos. Summer's blasting by. But uh, now that I'm out here and I'm away from my real job, I can take some time and uh, have some fun. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to do a video on some uh, microfiber pads. Uh, these particular pads come from Optimum. Uh, those of you who have purchased my DVD know about the Optimum product line. For those who don't, uh, you're going to get to learn something about them. Now, one of the uh, reasons that I like the Optimum, pop, uh, Optimum Polishes line is that Optimum actually manufactures the polishes they sell. So I know that I'm not getting something that's rebottled, relabeled, and, uh, and I don't have a clue where they come from. If I want to know anything about these particular polishes, I can call Optimum and talk to the actual guy who creates them. So he could tell me everything that I could possibly want to know about those polishes and compounds. So that's one of the reasons I use a lot of the lines I do. Uh, High Temp, Optimum, Meguiar's, I, I like them because of that reason. So um, Optimum happens to be one of those uh, more, much a lot more easier to reach the main guy than a lot of the other ones. Uh, so that's why I, I like using their product. Now, what I have here is one of their uh, compounding pads. It's a microfiber pad. Now, what you will notice, let me grab their polishing pad here. Uh, this is one of their polishing pads. Uh, other than being a different, set, a different size, they have two different color backings. Uh, one has uh, yellow, the compounding pad, and the polishing pad is white. Now, what I do, because I'm old and my mind ain't what it used to be, so what I do is I like to mark my pads so that I can see which pad it is. I put a C on this for compounding and a P on the other one for polishing. That way, and when I'm having one of my old moments, I can just look at the back of the thing and I don't have to remember or go look at a new package to figure out which pad is which. So you definitely can't, uh, you, you could do it by sight, but uh, like I said, sometimes I forget. So that's what I do. Uh, I'm using a, and let me get the exact size for you. Uh, let's see here. The smaller pad is a five and a quarter. So I want to say this is a six and a quarter. Yes, it is. It is a six and a quarter. And I'm using it on a PC 7424. XP with a six inch backing plate. Okay, so as you can see, the pad sticks out just a little around that. Now, if you get a five inch backing plate, which is the size backing plate that I suggest all novices start with, a five inch backing plate, then you would use the 5.25 inch uh, pads. All right, now one of the things that has been said about microfiber buffing pads is that they cut a lot quicker. Uh, however, they, when people use them wrong, they come apart a whole lot quicker. And that's not an experience you want to have. So what I'm going to do is kind of give you all a what I do so that you won't run into the, those experiences. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, I've used... Uh, the Porter Cable showing novices how to do this on a speed of five. Now, I'm going to start this off on a speed of four. That's because I want to make sure that my pad doesn't run into any issues. You've also seen me use three P-size drops with my uh, foam pads that I use. Well, in this case, I'm going to use a line. I'm going to use a horizontal line going across the pad. Now, the reason I'm going to do that the pad rotates. So if I do a circle, the, the product is just going to stay in that area. By doing a line directly across, as it pads, 
uh, pad spins, that product is going to start to spread itself. Now, I'm going to help it along by spreading some when I start. That is going to be my way of priming this. So let me do that first. Uh, I'm going to set my polisher down and grab the polishes that I'm going to be using. And the first one that I'm going to start with is Optimum Compound. So let me bring that in real close for you so you can see it. Optimum Compound 2. So it's just like when you've seen me using M105 and M205. This would be like M105 and then the polish would be M205. So it's the same concept. There's nothing different about that. Um, one thing that you always hear me say, uh, technique trumps product 24-7, 365. That's because it does. No matter what product you use, if your technique is lousy, your results are going to be lousy. So I am going to be using this product. Again, those of you who have purchased my DVDs already know about this product because you've seen me use it on my DVDs. You already know it works as advertised. Okay, so I don't want to saturate my pad with product. So let me get my line going here. And I'm going to show you all after I get the product on the pad how much I'm using. So... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go with one more mark, just to help spread this along. These pads are pretty thick, pretty thick. Uh, and now, right here, you can see I've got a big plus sign. I'm going with more polish just to be safe. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread that polish. I'm gonna just use my hand and spread that polish around, because this is what would happen is I start buffing. So I'm spreading it, spreading it, and I'm, I want to get. A good pad coverage and that's what I'm doing right here and then I'm gonna call that a primed pad got it nice and spread around this is when it's nice to have a apron that I can wipe it on but I definitely don't want to wipe it on my Louisville Cardinals nice shirt here L1C4 baby all right here I go all right that on the edge all right now I'm gonna do one half of this section here with the microfiber pad and then I'm going to do the other section with Optimum's foam pads. I want to see if there's any difference between which one I choose, if one gives me better results than the other, if one is quicker than the other. So basically what I'm doing is comparing microfiber to foam in the Optimum Polishes line. Alright, so here I go. I'm going to put some polish on here in this area and I'm gonna spread my area out some notice I'm working indoors where I shouldn't have any issues with the polish um, doing anything crazy like drying up and dusting so I'm gonna cut this polisher down because I want to spread this polish around some so here I go start it low Okay, I've got it spread around where I want it. Uh, the polish is acting very friendly. I'm going to go up to a speed of four to start. If I need to increase, that's what I will do. Here I go. Now, notice how slow I am moving the polish here. I am hardly applying any pressure at all. If you are looking closely, you can see that the back plate is spinning. All I'm doing is holding this polisher against the car. I want you to notice this door knob. I'm going to bring you in close and let you see that there is no polish in that door knob.
Notice how slow I am working. Okay, the polish is flashing. Okay, and by flashing, what I mean is the polish is starting to do this dull light, dull light, dull light. When I start seeing that, that's called flashing. That's when I've worked the polish long enough and I need to stop and inspect my results. Now, there's another thing that I want you to see. And let me bring the, the polisher close to the camera so you can see this. If you look at that pad, look at, look at how fluffy it still is. Notice that it isn't matted down. If it was matted down, that means I've used too much polish. Notice that it isn't matted down. It's still nice and fluffy. Your pad should always look like that at all times. If you don't have it looking this way, you've used way too much polish and you've caked your pad. Once you've caked your pad, you are no longer buffing. You are exercising and it is lousy exercise. Okay, so you want to make sure that you pay attention to that. Now, at this point, I want to wipe off the, the compound and see what it looks like. See what my spot looks like. I'm going to reach for my world famous rag company Eagle Blue Edgeless Towel, which you all know that I am a big fan of. And it's nothing like being at the location where I can just reach and grab one at my leisure. It kind of feel like a, a king at the king's table. All right, notice how easy this is wiping off. I mean, it's, it gets no easier than this. And what I'm going to do is, uh, luckily, out here at the rag company, I've got Steven Spielberg with his Steadicam. I'm going to bring him in and let him take a nice close look at that doorknob. And you will see that there is no, absolutely no polish stuck in that doorknob. Now, how did I do that? Well, I made a video that shows how I do that, how I keep from getting polish in those scenes. So... That video is how to keep polish out of your seams. So that's one thing I want you to pay attention to and notice. Now, why he was up close, some of you, because a lot of you folks are pretty smart out there, you were probably looking real close to see if there were any swirls remaining in the paint. And there still are some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another pass with the, um, with the compound. And this time, I'm going to go up a speed. Now, I'm also going to use a little less polish. So, my pad has been primed. So, I don't need to spread any more polish, or I should say compound, to be technical, on the pad. Because I've got the pad already primed and it's ready to work. That's what priming a pad means. It means get, getting the pad ready to work. So, I'm going to dab this around. Try to keep it out of that seam again. And then I'm going to turn it down low and spread that around. Okay. And uh, make sure you put it up against the car before you turn it on. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Because sometimes I can do stuff, but I can get away with that. Uh, because I've been doing it for a little while. So here I go now. I'm, this time I'm going to crank it up to a speed of five. And if I can see with my old eyes. There we go. I put it up to six and go back one. It's easier. All right, here I go. Speed of five. Pay attention to how slow I move the polish. Okay, notice doing this with one hand. That should give you an idea of how little pressure I'm applying.
Now, here's something I've noticed. Now I'm starting to create a little dust on the car. And that will happen if you run the polish or compound too fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little detail spray and I'm gonna spray this just to see how much polish remains on this, this pad. This is my way of reviving any compound that's left on there. I keep saying compound and polish uh, because they basically do the same thing, only one's more aggressive than the other. So don't get hung up on that. Okay, there's no polish in that, in that pad right there. So I'm not using too much. Uh, the fact that it's dusting up tells me that I'm working it too fast. So I'm gonna slow this back down. This is on the porter cable to a speed of four and keep it at a speed of four. I'm gonna add a little more polish and what I'm gonna do, let's see, get my little line going there because I definitely don't have any on there. Let me dab that around. I'm gonna do one more pass and after this pass, I'm going to pause so I can change pads and go to the next uh, section of the car. All right, so here I go. Speed of five, speed of four. Notice how it keeps spinning. Okay, I'm going to wipe that off and take a look at it, see what she looks like, grab my towel which I got laying over here, and we'll see what happens. Polish still wipes off pretty good, yep. Okay, other than being a little dusty, for the most part it has taken out most of the swirls. I'd say I'm 95% of the way there. 95%. That was two passes with a compound. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is switch my setup, go to a pad, and we're going to see what a pad will do. So, we will pause you all and come back in a minute. All right, boys and girls, the junk man coming back at you again. Uh, I have switched over now to a foam pad. This is a uh, pad that Optimum offers. It's got the eggshell surface. And uh, it's actually a 5-inch size, so I've got a 5-inch backplate, uh, correction, 5.25-inch, and I've got a 5-inch backplate on the porter cable. Now, I use the aggressive microfiber uh, compounding pad to do one section, and I did two passes to get out the damage that I had left behind from uh, clay. Now, I'm going to try that with the uh, foam pad and see which of the two is faster or better. So what I'm going to do now is add some compound to my uh, pad. Now I'm gonna do this the same exact way that I would do it if I was using a hex logic pad. I'm gonna add four pea-sized drops to the pad, four pea-sized drops, and I'm going to use that to prime the pad. After that, from that point forward, I will only add three pea-sized drops. I know they look kind of big, but I'm from Kentucky. We got big peas. All right, so here I go. I'm going to spread this out a little bit. That's about as far as I'm going to go. And then I'm going to crank this down to a speed of one. 
and just spread the compound around. Here I go. Okay, spread it around. I'm gonna crank the machine back up to a speed of five. You all have seen me, a lot of you all have seen me do this a thousand times, so I don't have to get any close-ups. And now here I go using a um, pressure of nine to 14 pounds, including the weight of the machine. You will notice that I can do this with one hand. I can apply enough pressure with one hand. Uh, it was the same pressure for the microfiber pad. So here I go, pay attention to how slow I work. Okay, the first pass that you do with a compound is always going to be the shortest pass because the uh, pad has absolutely no polish on it the first time you do it. So it's going to wear out rather quick, or I should say flash rather quickly. So let me get my Eagle Blue edgeless towel ready to go here and wipe this compound off. And a little bit of it is remaining behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a little detail spray. And I'm not going to spray it all over the car. I'm going to spray it on my pad, or correction, my towel. And I'm going to wipe off that, that excess compound. And since this is the first pass, it doesn't surprise me that that happened. But now, notice when I use, again, I've said this in plenty of my videos, when I... I'm using a runny liquid, I always use the waffle weave towel to wipe that away. Now, I'm looking at this spot right now. I can see it, um, and I trust at this point you all will take my word for it. But I can already see that this pad appears to have done more work quicker than the microfiber pad. That's what uh, it appears to me. Uh, I don't see any swirls remaining, and I see extremely light ones remaining with the microfiber. So I've just done one pass here, two passes here. If I did a third pass here, I know that all that damage would be gone. But on this panel here, I believe I am pretty much ready to go straight to the polish now I would change my pads so with this initial unscientific test I'm going to say that this foam appears to be cutting faster than the microfiber now your experience may be different maybe it won't uh, that's my experience that's what I'm noticing right here doing this pretty much basic side-by-side -side test. So you can take that for what it's worth. There are folks out there who prefer microfiber, um, and there are folks like myself. I'm kind of a, a little more lean toward foam. I've been working with foam for so many years, you know, that has some bearing on my bias. So that's what I would use, uh, and that's what I'm going to go by. Now, if you decide to go with either or, and let me uh, show you exactly what is available. 
I'm going to grab some stuff. The, the foam pads that are offered by Optimum and are sold by the rag company uh, are orange and blue. Now, in most of my videos, you've seen me using HexLogic orange and white. The white is a finishing pad. So is the blue. Uh, if you look up charts on the internet, you will see the blue either before or after the white. Uh, there are a ton of pad colors that are available for people who like to make it complicated. I am not one who likes to make it complicated. I learned in the Marine Corps making it complicated is not good. As a matter of fact, my first night of boot camp, the drill instructor asked if anyone had any college experience. I raised my hand, he handed me a broom and told me not to make it complicated. So I learned early making it complicated was not a good thing. So don't sweat the details. The blue will do exactly what the white will do. Um, and since you're not going to be running your car up to, uh, what's that big old fancy car show, uh, the one they hold in Arizona, you all know the name of what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, since you're not going to be doing all that stuff, you don't need to you don't need to use 500 different pads. Remove the damage, remove all the damage with the orange pad. Once all the damage is removed, you spit shine the paint back to perfection with either the white pad or this blue pad. They will both do the same thing. Those who have my DVD saw me use the blue pad. They saw uh, what the uh, results were. I had a nasty gash in the back of my bumper and I fixed it using these colors. So that is my assessment on comparing the microfiber to the foam. If you're a novice, the nice thing about these foam pads is they're offered in a 5.25 inch size. That is a great size for a novice. You want a smaller pad. It is easier to control the pressure with. It is easier to work with. You don't have so much pad like a six and a half inch pad where it's got so much surface it's grabbing that the speed keeps fluctuating all over the place. It takes time to learn how to use a pad that big. Smaller pad, easier learning curve. As a novice, you want your learning curve to be as small as possible. Okay, so that concludes this short video on how are comparing microfiber pads to foam pads, and I'm using all of the same company, Optimums, and uh, you can actually get these now online at theragcompany.com, home of the world's finest microfiber, okay? So you guys go out, get your swag on, and um, I will be coming back with another video showing you how to clean your pads with an all-purpose cleaner and water. Until then, my friends, this is the Junk Man, shining out.